you need to plan to spend about twice as much as you think. So if you think you can do this for five thousand, you gotta spend at least ten thousand dollars to get. I've learned that quick. I always call it new school and old school. Whereas new school, there's kind of a mathematic aspect to racing, and old school is well, raise that bar because it makes you go faster. The night we were scheduled to follow Kyle Shell at Cheyenne River Speedway in Lisbon, North Dakota, a severe thunderstorm canceled the races. We followed him to his house hoping to at least interview him in his garage, but then the power went out. We returned two weeks later to hot, sunny weather. When I was younger, we just lived down the road here, about a block maybe, and so you could always hear the cars, and, and Dad always took us to just you know, I don't really come from a family that raced. My uncle works at a, a like a truck repair shop in Jamestown, and they they put a car together one year and, and did it. And we, me and my brother tagged along once or twice when they were here. But you know, other than that, I don't have any family that ever raced. We just it's a group of guys that like to come and watch with us. And at first, it was almost just to, to hang out with the guys more than actually watch the races. And then just kind of grew from there. I always liked watching it and we started going to Fargo and Jamestown and Alex and watching races and then me and a couple buddies had always thought it'd be fun to do it but then we started looking at how much money it costs and it's like oh, I make 515 minimum wage washing dishes I can't do this and so we always just kind of forgot about it and then uh, last summer I told my dad I said you know I think I'd like to do that someday but I don't think I could and he goes why not I said well I just I don't know how to do it and so he was just trying to be a good dad and say, oh, to follow your dreams, don't, don't let anything hold you back. And so kind of dug into it a little further and I, I talked to Scott Bentz a couple of times and he kind of pointed me in the right direction. And uh, yeah, my parents went on vacation and I came home and when they were on vacation, I uh, borrowed a trailer from a friend and we went out to Oak, or Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin and I bought my car from Corey Crapser. Probably about a year ago now, I bought it last summer as a roller and then uh, this winter we bought a motor and, and kind of pieced it together over the winter and he helped me a lot with that. Remember when I went to pick it up, I was working in Monticello, Minnesota. And this was, yeah, in the March, I think. And it was supposed to be a two hour drive to Cameron. And I got done working at nine that night. I was gonna drive, pick up my car at 11. I was gonna be back to my hotel by 1.30 that morning. I ended up being a terrible snowstorm. And I remember driving, and I was like, this is a terrible idea. I should just turn around and go home. I should just turn around and go back. But I kept trucking. and. I think it was like 4.30 in the morning and I was like 10 miles from, Montes from my hotel and I blew a tire on the trailer and I didn't have a spare and I just limped it back and it was like, got back to my hotel and slept for like an hour and a half and then I was in the phone book trying to find someone to fix this tire for me. And that was a long day of work the next day because I slept for about an hour but I think I had so much adrenaline just looking out the window and like, oh, I think my car's all put together now that ended up being an okay day. I'm probably more mechanical now than I was when I started because I know what to look for and what, what does what and how things work now, but at the beginning I was way out to lunch and my mom used to say that too. She was like, don't you need to be a mechanic to work on this car? I think you just learn as you go along. And so, yeah, it's, it's been frustrating sometimes, but at the end of the day, I'm, I love doing it and we look forward to it every night. I guess I'd rather be here racing every night than at a lake home in a boat. That might sound weird to some people, but...
Racing Life is sponsored by Dakota Cat, Norman County Raceway, Valley Alignment and Repair. Most racers inherit their number, but being a first-generation driver, Kyle got to choose his, and the number 11 was chosen for several reasons. When I was putting the car together, that was kind of the last thing on my mind. People would ask me, what number are you going to be? I don't know, I'm kind of worried about how I'm going to pay for that motor first. And uh, I kind of asked my mom about it, and I was like, what do you think? She says, well, you were born on July 11th, so she thinks it should be 11, and then you started racing in 2011. So I think that's two reasons why. So I kind of thought about that for a while. And then one day I was eating at a Chinese buffet with some friends and you open up the fortune cookie and one of the lucky numbers was 11. And so I thought, well, that's the final piece of the puzzle there. That was so the that's, third, no, that was the third, third, third idea for 11. So that's what we stuck with. <laughs> On paper, it doesn't always look like it was a great night, but you know, being behind the car and, and just how it felt and, and how I felt like I drove is great. That's kind of how I gauge how the night went. That kind of helps it, helps me to, to want to keep doing as we get better every night. There's maybe been one or two nights where I felt like we just kind of tread in water and didn't get anywhere, but for the most part, we get faster every night and learn something more. And uh, you know, that makes it more enjoyable. If I would have just done this tonight, well, we'll move to Jamestown tomorrow night, then we'll try that and see what happens. So, so it just kind of keeps snowballing and, and making it more fun when you get better. I was very cautious and I was so nervous about getting, not having control of my car and, and hitting somebody else because I'm you know, still pretty new to this. I don't know what's you're allowed to rub up against them or what's too much and what's not enough. And one time I went to Devil's Lake and I remember when they, they threw the green flag and everyone kind of stayed high and I just dove down under everyone and passed like three cars in the first lap. And I was like, holy crap, I might do something here. So then I, I think I drove a little bit too aggressive there and kind of bothered somebody, but I ended up finishing like second in that heat and that's the best I've done all year. Started sixth and, and got to second. And so after that, I kind of have backed down a little bit and maybe I'm not driving as aggressively as I could or should. kind of have a I don't have a set pit crew so much but there's a group of guys every night you know Thursday I'll say you know this is what we're gonna do this weekend if you want to come let me know by four o'clock otherwise we're gonna leave without you so Dan comes out quite a bit um, Jason Kunze was my football coach in high school this is my assistant coach and he's just kind of become a family friend and he's always been a fan of racing and so he tags along him and his son when when it works for him so they'll be here running around with us tonight um, at first, my brother was pretty skeptical about all this. He, uh, he didn't want anything to do with it. And then one day, Dad couldn't come, and he said, Brandon, will you please go with him? I was like, is it really not that fun? You've got to beg him to come with? But he came with once, and I don't think he's missed a night since. He loves it. So that's a lot of fun. And then, yeah, when, my, when it works out for my dad, he comes with too. And uh, I think my mom and my sisters, they never come in the pits. You know, they always watch from the stands, but I'm starting to really like Jamestown. They kind of got their spot that they sit in every week and kind of meet some people that they see every week. And so they're enjoying it too. When me and my brother were in high school, we played football together. So every Friday, you know, my parents had their little ritual of they get up together with all the other football moms and, and go to the game or they go out to eat together before we go to the game and stuff. And so now it's kind of a, something to, for them to kind of keep doing. And now my, my mom's friends and family friends, they like to come along too and watch when it works for them. Well, you need a budget, and you need to plan to spend about twice as much as you think. So if you think you can do this for $5,000, you are going to spend at least $10,000 to get it. I've learned that quick. Um, and then, you know, don't be afraid to, to talk to people. I was always kind of, I always thought, 
this is a big secret and I'm not telling anyone my secrets, but you know, everyone I've talked to has been very open. And uh, yeah, the first time I ever talked to Scott, he kind of told me, he said, you know, some guys are pretty picky about it. He said, but I always he said, I like to surround myself with people that like to help. So just look up and down this road. You can walk up and down here and talk to any of these guys and, and they'll be more than willing to help you. And so, yeah, don't be afraid and just ask lots of questions. Make sure you know what you're getting yourself into before you do it, because it's no fun to be halfway into it and then find out, oh, I can't finish this now. My friends ask me that all the time, they're like, so do you make any money doing this? And it's like, well, if you think about, I paid 20 bucks to get in and spent $40 on fuel, I got 60 back. And they're like, oh, so you break even? It's like, well, that was a night on the motor and I got to change the oil on a couple nights and there's four tires. And if you think about, if you get a new trailer or a new pickup or this and that, it, there's no way it ever does. But I guess I'd rather be here racing every night than at a lake home in a boat. That might sound weird to some people, but. Work uh, sacrifices a little bit when I'm cutting out early or staying up late to get stuff done and that kind of thing. And, and uh, had to rush to a few proms and uh, <laughs> that kind of thing. The Racing Life is sponsored by Performance Auto, Randall's Excavating, Nugget Vending, KRJB and KRJM. Here are the Racing Life's Fan Pictures of the Week. I'm Doug Wolfgang from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and I'm a retired sprint car driver. And my question for the go-kart racer is, why do you use the number that you do? Is it your uh, birth date? Is it your favorite number from uh, uh, getting a good grade in school, the third paper in or something? What is it? Why, why do you use the number on the go-kart that you use? Hi, I'm Keaton Rested, and the reason I picked the number I did is because it was my dad's number when he raced Midwest Mods. Scott Bintz was just a racing fan, but the love of the sport got him behind the wheel of his own race car. Now he's one of the most popular drivers at the track. I'm from Jamestown, North Dakota, and I'm married uh, to my wife, Shannon, and we have five children, and uh, Katie, Caitlin, Megan, Cameron, and Samantha, and, uh, and uh, I work at uh, realtruck.com. We sell accessories online for cars and trucks. It's kind of exciting, and I was uh, fortunate to, uh, about five years ago, uh, be able to race a street stock and kind of fell in love with it since. Growing up in Minot, I used to go to the track there and watch uh, racers and um, always in Jamestown. I was kind of a fan before I was a racer and so I was pretty lucky to be able to uh, start racing. And that was really cool to do that. And um, Rusty Coleman, the guy who won tonight in the Midwest Mod, had built me a street stock and raced that. And he uh, and uh, Johnny C, who won in the A Mod tonight, uh, kind of helped me there. I got into the uh, Midwest Mod class, a couple years into it, and uh, Kelly Hago, who won in the streets tonight, hooked me up with Dustin uh, Strand and his dad, Brian Strand, and um, they uh, set up a, a, a Hoffman race car. It wasn't their chassis, and then the next year I got one of their chassis, and I've been racing that since, and um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that uh, help when you're uh, kind of a uh, 
nice thing about the racing community is that uh, people always help people. We were talking about it today as we were driving from Grand Forks, how uh, people always seem to pitch in when you're gonna, when you wanna race and uh, everything kind of comes together. So. My favorite number is two. It's uh, July 2nd when I was born. It's when our son was born, July 2nd. So she, and so it was two, but I knew Rusty and he had number two. And so I didn't want to pick two and one seemed better than three. So, and then of course I quickly learned that there's, at that time there was a lot of ones that were street stocks. And so I put the S on it. And then a friend of mine put some flames on it. So, uh, yeah, I, kind of been running that number since. Jamestown's my hometown track. Love the speedway, love the people here, and uh, a lot of people uh, from here that, uh, that have helped me, so uh, learned to race and all of that stuff. Probably my most memorable win was, well, there's a few of them, but one was, um, was uh, I believe it was last year, where um, Ryan Mickelson, who races here, and another kid, uh, we were racing in Huron, and I was in third, and on the final lap coming out of four, I'll be darned if I didn't pass both of them and win. And so it was like a shock, you know, and uh, I was about the last guy figuring to win that night. And so, and then uh, I guess last year winning the opener in Jamestown at your home track was awesome. And then uh, as well as, uh, uh, the uh, season championship I'd won here in Jamestown, which is really cool. Well, it's cost a little money and uh, have uh, put on some miles to go. The, uh, I was this year running for national points, so you got to race a little bit more. But um, I think, uh, you know, a lot of times the family goes with and friends, and so sometimes it's uh, work uh, sacrifices a little bit when I'm cutting out early or staying up late to get stuff done and that kind of thing and, and uh, had to rush to a few proms and uh, <laughs> that kind of thing. Older gentlemen say, get a haircut. And the ladies say they really like it. So of course I'm going with that for a while until I can't stand it any longer. The Racing Life is sponsored by Bad Cats Design and Print Solutions, Dakota Engine Builders, Red River Cart Club, Midwest Motorsports Weekly. Here is the Racing Life's Question of the Week. Rebecca Flayton and how did you get started in racing? Hi Rebecca, your question was how did I get started in racing? My answer for you is that it was, it started because of my family out was already racing. My uncle started when I was at a young age and then I started racing go-karts and then I moved into the Hornets and now I'm racing Midwest Modified. Thanks for your question. Scott has a natural charisma that shines through in his racing. He's exciting to watch and win. There may be a need for roof repair on the race car after a victory, 
but his pit crew doesn't mind. Well, you know, it seems like people are more competitive, you know, meaning the aspect of people getting better. Um, you kind of never know. I mean, there's certain racers, you know, that are going to be good all the time. And, uh, but it seems like, you know, people, even as fast as race cars are, people figure out how to make them faster and people copy it, you know, or not, or try to, you know, uh, there's always people um, that are always testing new stuff and, you know, if they start winning and everybody starts kind of trying to figure out what they're doing and, and, um, and I think there's a lot, there's, I always call it new school and old school, whereas new school there's kind of a mathematic aspect to racing and old school is, well, raise that bar because it makes you go faster, it gives you more uh, drive or loosens you up or versus, um, one of the things I did that helped me is I went to the Brooks and Shaw driving school and uh, really learned a lot about, you know, what actually happens when you change, you know, if you tighten the front, front right spring, um, what that does, or, uh, or not tighten it, but uh, have a stiffer spring, excuse me, or, you know, uh, the different shocks and what they do and, and uh, side bite and all of those kind of things. There's a lot of, you know, different theories. I tend to, you know, if the track's dry, I'll steer more front, front brakes into it. Some drivers will steer, you know, try to keep all the brake to the rear and, you know, balance the throttle and the gas. And sometimes you hit it perfect and other times you, uh, not so much. And uh, I'd had the setup a little too radical for me tonight. And so with the bumps, it was a little more wilder than I like it, but, um, I try to be, you know, competitive as fast as the car can go and still be smooth, which of course wasn't happening tonight. But, uh, you know, you try to get the right setup for the car for the right track and track conditions changed. And uh, I didn't realize I should have been paying attention closer that it was so bumpy in the middle of the track. So, um, but yeah, try to, uh, you know, do the best we can and, and uh, have uh, pretty good helpers, so we got a pretty fast engine from Dakota Engines, and of course uh, the Strands build the Millennium chassis, and they're, you know, past national champs. So uh, uh, if the uh, driver was as fast as the car, we'd win a lot more. <laughs> well, when I'm in the car, I always say, God, please help us have a safe, nice, fun race, and do a couple other little prayers, and. Um, it's, that's probably my biggest uh, ritual I do, but we usually, uh, well, we, when we were on a hot streak earlier and we'd won four times, we were thinking that uh, ACDC uh, Razor's Edge was the lucky tune, but I, we must have wore it out because it's not paying off right now. One of the other things I always try to do is get a, a good luck kiss from uh, Samantha here, and she usually, uh, uh, the. Good luck kisses are usually pretty uh, lucky, so. Can I get a good luck kiss? Thank you, sweetie. Well, the hair, I, uh, I don't know. I started uh, growing it long for a work contest, and I was going to, if we hit in certain numbers at work, I was gonna shave my head. Well, we haven't hit those numbers, and so I wound up with long hair. And, uh, and so it's been kind of interesting, but I guess I get a lot of attention because when you, it's hot and you start sweating, you get kind of, um, and so, and what I've noticed is, is the older gentlemen say, get a haircut. And the ladies say they really like it. So, of course, I'm going with that for a while until I can't stand it any longer. We are at Berna's Barber Shop, North Dakota's only female barber, and we're going to get the old buzz cut, or high and tight, hopefully. And uh, check it out. There's Burma's sign, your classic downtown North Dakota barber. Before we get her cut, i got to do one last thing, because I may not get to do this the rest of my life, and that is... Well, we, if we had Metallica music, it would go better, but I really want to do this a few more times. <laughs> I'm not going to do that anymore, so uh, anyway, I guess it's haircut time. And there we are, so
sir. Perfect. You betcha. Thanks again, everybody. And I guess we will, uh, until next time, smile. We need to get your car fixed. We need to go racing. The, the families, our friends, we barbecue, your kids, we're playing, we're, we're doing this, we're having a good time, we're laughing in the pits, and they said, eh, and then every once in a while we jump in the cars and go race. My thumb got caught in the steering wheel and shattered my arm, so I've got two plates and I think about 14 screws in my right arm holding it all, all together, all the pieces. Kind of. Yeah. You have a plug on your forehead, by the way. What's that? You have that? a mosquito. Oh. There you go. Even the bugs like yeah. it here. Yeah. <laughs>